What is up, Skyrim fans? Kino here. Alright, so I'm not really known for making video game content, but after a long day of editing Sopranos videos, I do like to blow off steam with some games. Lately, I've been replaying Skyrim, and I figured this would be a fun little side project to see if I can beat the game as Tony Soprano. Now, of course, let me give credit to Nerdbit for inspiring this style of video. If you guys haven't seen his Can You Beat series before, you definitely should. Link to his channel in the description. Now, for those of you who have been living under a rock for the last decade, Skyrim is the fifth installment of the Elder Scrolls franchise, and one of the most popular RPGs of all time. It's set in the fantasy world of Tamriel, which seems like a far cry from the magical kingdom of North Jersey that Tony Soprano calls home. But today we're going to see if we can make as close of a character to Tony in the game. As the game opens up, the damn feds, also known as the Imperial Army, have captured us. We're just legitimate businessmen, leave us alone. After a pretty long cutscene, we're finally allowed to create our character. I chose Imperial, since they're supposed to be based off the Roman Empire. And the Romans? Where are they now? You're looking at them, asshole. After some adjustments, I feel like I've made a pretty good representation of Tony. What kind of likeness is that? Unfortunately, the anti-Imperial discrimination continues, and we're set to be executed without a trial. Luckily for us, we're saved by the timely intervention of a dragon. Thanks for the help, Alduin. This is the last time we're going to be seeing each other, since I don't plan on doing the main quest. After I make it through the town, I'm presented with a choice of who to go with. Tony will never cooperate with the feds, though, so I chose to go with Rayloth. He cuts me free, and we make our way through the keep. I decide that as Tony, I'll be using my fist to settle problems. Luckily, I am using the Ordinator mod, which revamps the talent system. It adds a bunch of unarmed perks to the Light Armor skill tree, which is perfect given my future plans for the character. After we get out, I immediately set out on my own. I have my own plans now that I am free. For this playthrough, I have three goals to beat the game as Tony Soprano. 1. Become the boss of a crime family. 2. Get a wife. 3. Get a Gumar. With those three accomplishments, I'll truly feel like Tony Soprano. First things first though, I need to make my way to Riften, and the quickest way there is by carriage from Whiterun. Along the way, I spot a group of people having a fight with a giant. After helping them, one of the finest pieces of tail I've ever seen approaches me. Get it? Tail? We might have found a contender for our future Gumar. But for now, I hire a carriage to Riften. At the gates, however, one of the guards tries to shake me down for some money. Uh, no, buddy. I know this game. Try that with some tourist. I won't pay. I know too much about extortion. <laughs> All right, keep your voice down. You want everyone to hear you? I'll let you in. Just let me unlock the gate. After that, I enter the city. Riften is the home of the Thieves' Guild, the closest thing to the Mafia Skyrim has. That's who I need to join. Now, normally Brynjolf approaches you, but for some reason it was glitching and he didn't come talk to me. Oh well, it wouldn't be Skyrim without some bugs. After speaking with him, Brynjolf asked me to help him with a scam he's pulling to frame someone for theft. Well, if it gets me paid, Tony is willing to ruin someone's life forever. The next day at the market, Brynjolf distracts the crowd, and I steal a ring from Medesi's lockbox and plant it in Branche's pocket. With the job complete, Brynjolf asks if I'm interested in more work. I am, and now I just have to make my way down to their headquarters in the Ratway. Unfortunately, there are two guys down there who don't take kindly to me being in their turf. They're pretty tough at early levels, so I resort to using an axe that I found. After dispatching those two, I encounter another guy who tries to attack me. Luckily for me, he actually has a pair of enchanted gloves that boost my unarmed attacks. These will be very useful for me for the rest of the quest chain. After making it to the Winking Skeever, Brynjolf is impressed. He gives me another task, this time to collect money owed to the guild from some deadbeats. Oh, don't worry Brynjolf, I know this game as well. Oh. 
Actually, even though brawling is an option, I decide to use some more creative measures. I threaten one of the deadbeat's family, and the other I break a priceless item. This works so well that the final person hands over the money without a fight, having heard about our methods already. After returning the gold, Brynjolf officially asks us to join the Thieves Guild. We're led into the cistern to meet the boss of the family, a man named Mercer Frey. He's kind of an asshole, and not wanting to take no shit from him, I decide to mess with him a little bit. Do I make myself clear? I'll give you a dignified. Go fuck yourself. Since I'm a rising star in the family, Mercer decides to send me on a job to infiltrate Golden Glow Estate. I'm encouraged to do it sneakily, but since my sneak skill isn't very high yet, and because I'm Tony Soprano, I decide to beat all the guards to death with my fists instead. After that, I set fire to the beehives, and to go along with the roleplay, I use a torch instead of shooting fire from my hands. After that, I make my way through the estate. I decide to channel my inner Tony some more and steal any wine that I find. Go wine. After beating Arangoth down to the ground, I loot his safe using a key I took off his body. Finding a deed of sale, I bring the information back to Brynjolf. He doesn't know what to make of it yet, but sends us off to meet with Maven Blackbriar. She's a girl boss like Annalisa, but Tony Soprano doesn't take no shit from women. A fucking woman boss? So what do you want? Never happened in the States. Never. You're a firebrand, aren't you? It's about time Brynjolf sent me someone with business sense. I was beginning to think he was running some sort of beggar's guild over there. She then gives me my next job, which is to put one of her competitors, Haunting Brew Meadery, out of business. I meet our contact Malice in Whiterun, who wants me to contaminate the meadery. After dealing with a crazy rat wizard who lives in the basement for some reason, I poison the mead and get the owner locked in prison. Turns out the same person who bought Golden Glow has also been funding Haunting Brew. Luckily, Mercer has found someone who might know who this person is, an Argonian named Gollum Eye. We meet him in solitude, but he refuses to answer my questions unless I steal some wine for him. Dude, I'm Tony Soprano. I'd steal the wine either way. After giving it to him, he tells us that he brokered the deal, but he doesn't know the name of the person. Not believing him, I follow him. Apparently trailing a few feet behind someone in broad daylight is considered sneaky. Eventually, I follow him to the East Empire Company's warehouse where he works. And man, is this place a treasure trove. While I'm there, I also steal a whole bunch of cheese. Not only will these act as health potions for some sticky fights later, it's totally a thing the real mafia would do. You realize I had an entire container of a port of provolone coming into that port Saturday? Jesus, that shit is liquid gold. After quartering Gollum Eye, he admits that the person behind all this trouble is a woman named Carlia, who apparently killed the previous guildmaster Gallus. I take this information back to Mercer, who decides that Carlia must finally die. He has me meet him at Snowvale Sanctum, the location where Carlia is hiding. When I get there, Mercer says that Carlia is inside, and that he killed her horse to make sure she didn't escape. This does not sit well with Tony. We make our way through the Draugr crypt. However, when we finally reach Carlia, we're poisoned with a paralysis arrow. Carlia reveals that it was actually Mercer who killed the previous guildmaster, and Mercer then stabs me to keep his secret. However, I awaken outside the crypt with Carlia having saved my life. Wanting revenge against Mercer, I agree to help her by having Gallus' journal translated so that she can prove Mercer's betrayal to the guild. However, it's written in the ancient language of the Falmer, and to decipher it, I'll need the translation of Tamriel's foremost Falmer expert, Calselmo. However, Calselmo is being a little bitch and refuses to let me into his lab unless I do him a favor. Not wanting to look weak, I decide to just steal the key which is sitting out in the open and break in. I make my way through his facility, killing a bunch of guards in the process. 
before getting the translation. With the journal in hand, we go back to the Thieves Guild. They don't want to believe it, but after seeing that Mercer has stolen all the money out of the guild's vault, they vow to take him down. After breaking into his house, I find Mercer's plan is to steal the eyes of the Falmer, the most lucrative heist in all of Skyrim. However, before we can go stop him, Carlia reveals that she's a Nightingale, an agent of the Daedric Prince Nocturnal. Mercer was also a Nightingale, but eventually betrayed their god by stealing the Skeleton Key, an artifact that can unlock any door. This caused Nocturnal to curse the guild with bad luck, and the only way to fix things is to return the key. She also insists that we become Nightingales in order to get the power to beat Mercer. This is honestly the part of the questline that sucks the most, as you have no choice but to pledge your eternal soul to Nocturnal in order to complete the quest. I refuse to wear her stupid armor during the pledge, because again, Tony hates being told what to do. Frankly, you've got a problem with authority. After the ritual, Brynjolf tells me that I should be the next guild master after Mercer dies. I of course agree, since this is what I've wanted the whole time, but it will have to wait until after we sort out Mercer. After that, we head out for Mercer's location. Along the way, a drug dealer tries to proposition me. Sorry buddy, no one sells in my territory without me getting a taste. After a very long dungeon that I ended up just running through to save time, we confront Mercer. I tell him that I don't give a shit about any of this god nonsense, and that I'm just here for the eyes. We then fight, which is annoying because he keeps going invisible and running away. But eventually, I manage to kill him with a sweet body slam, and I recover the eyes and the skeleton key. However, the cave starts to collapse and flood with water. Luckily, thanks to Nocturnal's divine bullshit, a way out is revealed and we escape. Carlia thanks us for taking care of Mercer, and tells us to return the skeleton key to fulfill our oath to Nocturnal. Yeah, no, I'm gonna keep it. Which is objectively the funniest outcome, to have gone through all that trouble just to do the same thing that Mercer did. But for now, with Mercer gone, I've got more stuff to take care of. It's about time I finally settled down and found myself a nice wife to cheat on. In order to get married in Skyrim, you have to do something for a woman. You know, just like in real life. Here you are. Now, remember... People in Skyrim respond to deeds. You'll find more people interested in your love if you help them. Oh, so it's fucking money. That's all this is to you? And though there are many women in Skyrim you can marry, there is only one real choice. Camilla Valerius. Not only is she an Imperial like me, her name sounds so close to Carmela DeAngelis. Now, in order to get Camilla to marry you, you have to recover the Golden Claw from Bleak Falls Barrow for her brother. After a quick dungeon run, I return the claw. Putting on an amulet of Mara I bought from Riften, Camilla says that she's interested in me. After a beautiful wedding ceremony at the temple, we're husband and wife. One goal down, two to go. But Camilla has some expensive taste, and we need to get her a big house in the hills. Luckily, I know the perfect place. After doing a job for the Jarl of Falkreath, I'm allowed to buy land to build a house on. The process of getting everything set up in the house takes a lot of time and materials, so I would pick up supplies as I went around doing all my other quests. However, by the end of it, I had my own mansion just like Tony. I decided to also get some kids while I was at it. Unfortunately, there's no pregnancy in Skyrim unless you install some fetish mods, so I'll have to adopt. I decided to go with Imperial children just to keep up with the roleplay. The first child to adopt is a daughter, and I go with Lucia. She's a perfect stand-in for Meadow. She even gives me a dagger when she gets to the house, which is totally a Meadow move. For a son, the only Imperial I can adopt is in the orphanage in Riften. But in order to adopt, I have to start the Dark Brotherhood questline. I meet with Aventus Arantino, who then sends me to kill Grella the Kind. I beat her to death, and then later when I sleep, the Dark Brotherhood kidnaps me. How they took me out of the guild hall with all my people all around me, I'll never know. When I wake up, a woman named Astrid tells me that I owe the Dark Brotherhood a kill, and that if I want to go free, I have to do what she says. But again, Tony doesn't take orders from women, so instead I beat her ass down. 
Again, this was also that I could adopt a child, so I don't really care about locking myself out of the Dark Brotherhood questline. After this, I can finally adopt a son. I choose Samuel, since he's the closest thing I could find to an AJ. However, a bug happened, and he refuses to actually leave the orphanage and come to my house. Oh well, it fits that my son would be a disappointment just like AJ. I'm supposed to get a vasectomy when this is my male heir? While I was doing all of this, I also had to do a bunch of radiant jobs for the guild. See, in order to actually become boss, you need to complete five different jobs in each of the major cities and do a special quest. These jobs are given out randomly, so if you get a city you don't need, you have to quit the quest and restart it. It's very annoying. I ended up doing the burglary and the numbers jobs because those were the easiest. However, the special quests were kind of cool. Each one of them is unique to the city. For example, in Windhelm, I'm tasked with taking out a rival gang of thieves called the Somerset Shadows. Luckily, these guys are clowns. They remind me of the Vipers, and I even go so far as to burn their little banner just to humiliate them more. It's a guild of Ultima Thieves. They call themselves the Somerset Shadows. Ooh, really? What's that, you Girl Scout troop? After all the special jobs are complete, I'm finally ready to become boss. Actually, no. Unfortunately, giving back the skeleton key is a requirement to become boss. So, I head to the Twilight Sepulchre, and after a boring dungeon, I'm confronted by Nocturnal herself. And I take back everything I said before. I am down to worship these titties for all of eternity. And I'll stick my key any place she wants me to. She also gives me some special powers, which is kind of cool. But yeah, mostly the titties. Those are some amazing tits. Thank you, sweetie. <sighs> After that, I finally become boss. And just like the jersey making ceremonies, it's a little underwhelming. But with two of my goals now accomplished, I can finally set out for my final task, getting a Gumar. Just like before, there are many fine women that I could choose from to be my companion while my wife stays at home with the kids. However, I think I know the perfect Gumar for Skyrim Tony Soprano. Along my journeys, I've heard rumors of a group of vampire hunters called the Dawn Guard. I head over to their base and am directed to investigate some vampire activity. After fighting my way through the cavern, I come across a beautiful woman with dark eyes and blood-sucking tendencies. Serana is the perfect side chick for my character. She reminds me of Gloria Trillo and the other unstable women that Tony dated. However, in Serana's case, instead of depression and neediness, it's more so mommy and daddy issues. After freeing her, I take her back to her family castle. Her dad is so happy to see his Elder Scroll again, he offers to make me a vampire just like them. I decline though, as Tony doesn't want a man to suck him. I offer you my blood. Take it and you will walk as a lion among sheep. Men will tremble at your approach and you will never fear death again. This sounds very gay. They kick me out and I continue on with the Dawn Guard. Eventually Serana shows back up clearly being attracted to me. I agree to help her stop her father. After a whole bunch of boring stuff that's not really worth recapping at this point, we end up in her mother's laboratory. We discover a portal to the Soul Cairn, but there's a problem. In order to enter, I'll need to become a vampire. Technically, I can get soul trapped instead, but I take the opportunity to get sucked by Serana instead. Turning someone is a very personal thing for vampires. It's intimate. For us. Mom is a little who? Take you out, bitch! After that, we deal with Serana's mommy issues. After even more bullshit, we're finally ready to confront her father. However, Serana has given me a disease, and the Dawn Guard demand that I get myself cured before we continue. Hey, I had her tested for AIDS. What do you think I am? After a short little necromantic ritual, we're ready to invade Castle Valkahar. I help Serana deal with her daddy issues, and the quest is complete. Serana wants to come with me as my side chick, and we finally have a Gumar, completing my final goal and proving that you can indeed beat Skyrim as Tony Soprano. Hope you guys enjoyed this little side project. 
I know it's a little different than my normal content, but I find it fun to shake things up every once in a while. Let me know if there are any other games you'd like me to try and beat as Tony. And, with our playthrough finally complete, I think there's only one thing left to say. Camilla, can you shut the door? My ancestors are smiling at me, FBI. Can you say the same? Obscrazing Media, Daz J. Kit, Sam Cedarlund, Celery Man, Jenna Marie Johnson, Brad Smith Studios, Uncle Mike, Matt Joyce, Countess Von Zarevich, and Luke P.